Okay, C. Lindelof videos, T. I. Inspire casts. Well, today I want to talk about complex zeros of functions, and I want to talk very, very quickly, at least mention these two theorems that come into play. So we have this function, and let the function be like 4x cubed plus 3x squared plus 1. So this is what that looks like. This is, so you see it here, it's 4x cubed plus 3x squared plus 1. And you can see that this function has one zero. But hopefully you can see that because of the shape of this thing, it could pass through the x-axis up to three times. So we have the theorem of maximum number of zeros of a polynomial. And it says that if the, the exponential value is greater, I'm sorry, is yeah greater than zero, that it has at most three real zeros. OK, so you can see this one has one real zero. However, there's a second one. There's a second theorem, and that theorem is the theorem of exact number of zeros of a function. And that's what we're talking about today, because it's complex, and we're talking about complex numbers here. So if, you, if we go over to here, here, so I solve this. I type in the solve function. It says solve. I put my function in, and it comes back x is negative 1. However, if I ask this calculator in particular to do something a little bit different, it will give us all of the possible all of the possible zeros so I'm going to hit C solve C is for complex I'm going to put 4x cubed I'm just taking the one from the top using my right hand cursor to get over out of that exponent right plus 3x squared plus 1 sorry equals 0 remember it's comma x which means in terms of comma x, right? Comma x. Hit enter. I want you to, before I hit this, I want you to notice the two different functions I use. I use solve function here, which gave me just the real zeros. That's the one that we looked at on the graph. But if I use C solve, complex solve, it, it goes to that theorem of the max, uh, of, sorry, the theorem of the exact number of zeros, right? Because we can have also complex zeros, right? So here are the complex zeros. I'm going to hit this and look. There it is. We still have our x is equal to negative 1, but we also have this. So my, I had a conversation with Texas Instruments today, and that conversation went, why wouldn't you always use C-Solve? Because, and they didn't have a really good explanation. I have one good explanation for you. If you're not interested in seeing the complex solutions, well, and, and you think they exist, then don't use C-Solve. But if you just use this, look at this. If I use this solve, right? And we know that uh, x squared plus 6x plus 9 uh, has zeros at, 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 at negative 3, right? So I put in C-Solve, right? And I'm going to put in x squared. I hope it is right. x squared plus 6x, right? 6x plus 9, right, is equal to 0, comma, sorry, comma x, we can see, hopefully we can see, there are no complex solutions to them, this, but it still gave us the correct answer back, didn't it? If, right, if you remember, if I factor this, it comes up to x plus 3 times x plus 3, so it's 0 is that x is negative 3. There are no complex um, solutions to this, except for every number can be written as a complex number, right? Complex numbers are a plus bi, and the b value, the number in front of i, is 0, and 0 times i is 0, leaving you with this. God, I know this was a pain in the neck to hear all this junk, but there's lots of really cool ways to use this calculator, and I want to help you to get those. Hey, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, let me know, and do me a favor. If you haven't already subscribed, please, thanks.